guys you're welcome back to my channel if you guys are feeling good my name is Bukome Bike Cross. so guys we're going to be checking out this video titled second largest Muslim gathering in the world so let's watch guys you must have seen and experienced several Muslim gatherings throughout the world the most well known among them all is undoubtedly the Hajj which is the greatest annual Muslim gathering in Mecca with approximately millions of Muslims from all around the world. Hmm. But have you heard of the Bishwa Ijtima, where more than 2 million Muslims gather every year? Oh. Despite being the second largest Muslim gathering in the world, many people are unfamiliar with Bishwa. Bishwa. This annual Muslim gathering takes place on the hmm. suburbs of Dhaka, Bangladesh, and is known as Bishwa Ijtima, which means global congregation. It is held on the Turag River in Tongi, and it's the world's second largest Muslim gathering. Hmm. Undoubtedly, Bangladesh has the world's fourth largest Muslim population. Hence, the bulk of devotees taking part in the Ijtima are Bangladeshis. However, Muslims from 150 different nations also attend this congregation. Mm -hmm. Due to the large number of crowds gathering at the venue, the event has been divided into two segments, each hmm. lasting three days. This year, its first phase started on the 13th of January and ended on 15th, whereas the second phase has took place from 20th to 22nd January 2023. Wow. In the second phase, the worshippers give daily prayers and listen to scholars who recite and explain the Qur'an. In the Akhiri Munajat, final prayers, they raise their hands to supplicate to Allah for global peace and hidayah. The second phase's Friday prayer was conducted by an Indian scholar, Yusuf bin Sa'ad al Khandalvi, the eldest son of Maulana Sa'ad Khandalvi of India. Each day, the reciter and Imam are different to give the congregation a new color and to add more value in the gathering. The gathering effectively conveys Muslim brotherhood and togetherness. It is seen as a symbol of mutual affection and respect. Many Muslims also believe this to be a chance to breathe a new life into their commitments to Islamic beliefs. For the same reason, they start gathering in the area a day or night before the prayer. Hmm. This year's Bishwa, as usual, was profoundly amazing and interesting. A general sermon was given by Maulana Usman, which was then translated into Bengali and other languages. Right after Friday's Fajr prayers, with which significance and esteem, you may be asking why it is commemorated. Let us investigate the historical context that led to such a massive prayer gathering. Bishwa Ijtima is organized by the Bangladeshi branch of the Tablighi Jama'at. This movement has its origins in India. The Tablighi Jama'at was found by Muhammad Ilyas Al Khandlawi in the Miwat district of India in 1926. Based on reformist tradition, the movement was founded to revitalize Muslims' failing moral norms, which had come to disregard Islamic teachings. Maulana Ilyas hmm. was very motivated to create a movement that would bring spiritual reformation to Islam wow. after his second journey to Mecca in the early 1900s. Ah. So on his return in 1926 or 1927, he thought about it so much that it became his aim. He left his job and later settled in Delhi near Dargah Hazrat Nizamuddin from when he began his campaign. He aspired to alter the social lives of Muslims so that they may adopt the lifestyle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The movement quickly gained admirers following its inception. Hmm. By the year 1941, an annual conference took place, mm -mm. which was attended by 25,000 adherents. This Islamic missionary movement continued to encourage its members to practice the true faith of Islam, according to the guidelines set by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Apart from enabling Muslims in becoming more religiously devout, the movement promoted da'wah to non-Muslims. The said movement quickly grew into a powerful religious movement. Following its creation, efforts to expand began. Initially, the rise was restricted to South Asia. After the partition of the subcontinent in 1947, Pakistan was established and so was the Pakistan chapter of the Tablighi Jama'at near Lahore. This chapter remained the largest until the independence of Bangladesh. Wow. By 1950, the Bengali Tablighi Jama'at had existed in Dhaka, 
East Bengal. In 1954 and 1958, the inaugural Ijtimaz were hosted in Chittagong and Narayanganj, respectively. Later in 1960, 1962, and 1965 Ijtimaz were held in Dhaka at the Rama Race Course. By 1967, when the number of participants increased, the government of East Pakistan allowed the event to be held annually along the banks of Turag. When Bangladesh separated from Pakistan and became independent in 1971, it gave birth to the largest chapter of the Tablighi Jama'at. This movement later on spread across Southwest and Southeast Asia and later on reached the corners of Africa, Europe, mm. and North America. Every year in January, the Bangladeshi chapter of the Tablighi Jama'at organizes the event. Mm. Millions of people come freely in Tongi, a northern area of the city of Dhaka. The government assists in the construction of huge tents to house people. Mm. There are also plans in place for viable transportation by a Biman Bangladesh Airlines, Bangladesh Railway, and Bangladesh Road Transport Corporation. The armed forces are also mobilizing by putting in place necessary infrastructure. Despite their efforts, mm. participants encounter challenges due to the large number of people which can only stay in a confined space. This creates issues with cleanliness and cooking. Mm. Internal mobility is also hampered during the event. Thus schools and workplaces are closed. The believers, however, demand the bare minimum. They are good on their own. Their acts of kindness very commonly seen among the devotees who let go of their needs and appreciate the needs of others. The celebration begins with a large gathering of Muslims on the first day, where they perform the Fajr, the morning prayer, together. Mm -hmm. This is followed by sermons and discussions on various Islamic topics led by religious scholars and leaders. The second and third days are similar, with more prayers and speeches throughout the day, as well as cultural and social activities. On the second day, a large gathering of Muslims is held where the congregational prayers are led by the khatib, preacher, in the morning. The holding of various religious speeches and sermons also marks the day. On the third and final day, the event concludes with the akhiri munajat, last prayer, which is led by the khatib and is attended by many people. This year's khatib are from Pakistan, India, and Turkey. Hmm. When they are done with prayers and sermons, Free distribution of langar, food, wow. takes place. And nice. the event concludes with people returning to their homes. Yes. The event is celebrated with great devotion and enthusiasm and is a significant event for Muslims around the globe. Many devotees travel long distances only to participate in Bishwa Ijtima Bishwa. as it's considered a great honor to attend the event. The event's success is evident from the ever-increasing number of Muslim congregated in the banks of Turga of Tongi. It is estimated that the number of devotees will continue to grow. However, mm. this can further create massive overcrowding and cold winter temperatures. So necessary steps are required to keep the attendees projected given the rise in numbers of COVID cases. It seems that nothing can hinder the devotees from attending Bishwa Ijtima. Mm. To witness such love and devotion to religion mm -hmm. is remarkable. This marks the end of our video. We are very keen to know if you have heard of Bishwa Ijtima. Sure. Let us know in the comments below. Oh, wow. Bishwa Ishtiman. Wow. This is really nice. The fact that most Muslims are very devoted is a big thing. I love the way they are always devoted into the things of God. Wow. Second largest Muslim gathering interesting like i'm just hearing this for the first time i know that muslims do gather together to pray to celebrate especially during their festive you know periods but the fact that you know bishwa is the second largest muslim gathering is really nice to know like i've never heard of that place before it's kind of new to me and I'm so happy to learn so many histories about this and it's interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like, share, and comment. I'll see you in the next one. Stay blessed. Bye.